what I've done is I plucked off, for the lack of a better word, the branches on this sweet potato and uh, covered it with more straw so that uh, other sweet potatoes will grow underneath there. That's my assumption. Of course, for sweet potato farmers out there, you know, this might not be the right way, but I'm learning. I like to learn as I go and just experiment with different things. There have been some things that I've done and I didn't even read about it. It was just a hypothesis and it turned out to be good. So it worked. Here are the sweet potatoes. And here are the okra here. Oh, sorry, the um, oregano. This is Greek oregano. What I didn't know that's fascinating about this herb is that it actually roots out, the branches do. So watch this. I pull it up. There are roots on this branch. That's mm -hmm. roots. Okay. So each branch is alive <laughs> on this plant. So you can like, I can take this off, put it in some dirt and it'll grow, this, this uh, Greek oregano will grow. Okay. So I didn't know that. I just, uh, that's the more lavender here. These are companion or allies, this um, oregano and this um, lavender, according to that book from the 1970s by Tanya uh, Dix Dixler, I believe. Forgive me, I've mispronounced your name. Uh, this are, these are uh, squash here, and these are dying, but you know, give it a respectable passing. And I've tried to um, prune these as much as possible so it looks, still looks nice, which it, it does. And here are just some sticks laying out. This is gonna get covered just like this, just like this, uh, the pine straw here. Pine straw is gonna go on top of this and it's gonna break down over time and that's what we want and more sticks here. The pine straw is gonna go over that same process. And last, the last uh, bed here. Uh, All right. Um, Marigold is here, and then there is kale. The kale is there as well. So there's there's a uh, kale there, just like at the other garden. Then I have one um, collard green plant over there. The purpose of this bed is what I read. This is like a trap. This is a trap bed. And what this trap bed does is it attracts um, the um, animals that eat this to this spot. So this is their spot. If they eat this, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try to hinder it as much as possible, but you know, it's gonna do what it's, it's gonna do. So if you have to, if you can't work, uh, stop it, you just live with it. So this is my way of living with it, possibly. Uh, these two plants are gonna blossom out, gonna get big, and then those uh, animals are gonna come, rabbits, um, deer, anything like that to eat some, and they're gonna consume these plants. So, it, you know, uh, they, these plants might be gone, but that's fine. They're going to stick here. They're going to think that it's here. Over there, these beds are positioned so far away that it actually makes it, uh, there's a better chance. And then if that bed is gone, there's another bed on top over there and on the front of the uh, house that works for this area. For, so, so for p different people's houses, different situations, depending on your budget or, or what you have to work with, um, you know, all of this is affordable. I didn't, I haven't, uh, really bought anything. I, I created everything for those watermelons that were here. There were two, there were uh, one, two, three, four, five. There were six watermelon stands uh, that I created. And those watermelon vines grew on the uh, top of those, um, those stands. And in those stands, the watermelon actually started to develop watermelons that were hanging. So that's how healthy this, this soil is. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was the eggplant. These are eggplants here. And if you feel those eggplants, like you can tell it's alive, you know? Yeah. It's like it has fur on it growing oh, on the eggplant. That's cool. And so there's a blossom there. If it were summertime or springtime, this would come out and create an eggplant. Um, there was a blossom here. It was developing two of them. There's a blossom here, uh, a blossom there. I mean, all around it is just developing, but it's, it's, it's going to die and that's okay. It'll come, it'll come back, uh, hopefully. And if not, you can buy more. But I, I like to create plants from seed. I don't like to buy. And you see here, the same thing happened with these watermelon. They came out of nowhere. There are watermelon growing here, sprouting up. Okay, so what, tell us about this. What is this? Oh, okay. This is a, a watering system. And this is a small system. So if you don't want your water bill to go up, you just put water in this 
and over time it uh, goes down on hot days it'll go down and you probably have to do it like twice or three times but this saves on the water bill and this is just I mean look at it this is an ocean spray bottle that I've taken out the bottom of it and I put it I dug a hole and I put it the ocean spray bottle in that hole so is it like, so, is, so I noticed it I noticed it had a top on it yeah so is the top like got holes in it is yeah that what yeah it is? right right the okay. top the top of this has holes in it okay. I drilled a hole so two holes. holes okay got yeah it. and then there's holes on the side so uh, it, it okay. acts like a sprayer Gotcha. It's spraying out. Yeah, that's pretty unique right there. I never thought about that. Yeah. And the water bottle here is doing the same thing. These these pepper plants don't need a lot of water. So this water bottle acts like a um, what you have in a workplace, those things that go bloop, 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 and you get the water. This acts like the same thing. And there's a there are holes, tiny holes from pins, and that was Elori's idea to put tiny pin holes in the water in the uh, water bottle. And it acts like a little sprinkler system. Oh, a little water um circulation deal there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is a lavender here. Uh another lavender. All these lavenders it, it really does keep those pests away. Like they don't like it. Uh eggplant same thing. And these has blo it, it has blossoms all over these branches. Unfortunately it's it's uh it's about to die. But uh, as I said again, you can buy it or I can grow it. I have seeds in there for these eggplants, so it'll be passed on one way or another. And this, these, um, this pecan tree, um, going back to that pecan tree, it actually, from what I've seen, and from what the way it looks, and from what I've read, not just in this book, but uh, also, too, you, you want to mix. What I've done to learn is I just um, mix stuff up. Like, whatever I watch, I try to find gardening. I try to find something about um, plants and you know, things like that. Uh, PBS is a great uh, station to learn stuff like that. Uh, public broadcasting station uh, here in Mississippi. There are actually radio stations in each state. Um, uh, public radio stations that you can go in Texas. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure, but here in Mississippi is MPB Radio, Mississippi Public Broadcasting, and they talk about plants and stuff like that. So that's a good, good place to learn about plants. This is uh, the pecan tree, and if you look at this pecan tree, you can tell something is wrong from looking at the leaves. Uh, the leaves, um, it has something called liver spot. I think that's what it is, uh, and it's a, it's a disease. Uh, you see here in the tree itself, uh, let's see, yes, that's all natural, like somewhere like here, like something drilled into that, and these small indentations here, something made that, um, and again here, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if these are natural occurrences that I'm looking at, but you have to think about this tree like a person. If you see this on a person and the person doesn't look normal, you know something is wrong health-wise. So it, it, uh, it's not necessarily, a, it could be a, a pest or it could actually be a disease. And from the leaf color here, the way the leaves are colored, it looks like a disease. And this is definitely a uh, liver spot. Some of this is just natural discoloring for the season, but some of it is unnatural, like these spots. That's not natural. Um, and then if you look at the tree here, I mean, I, I'm reading directly from this book. Uh, if you look at the tree, you can notice that this tree wasn't trained. Uh, when the tree is growing, you can actually train it to um, for the leaves and the branches to grow a certain way. Because if you do that, it'll cause it to bear more, and it'll have you'll have more. Um, you will have more uh, pecans. So. That's not what I'm looking for. Harvest, store, unshelled, no. So late liver, uh, liver spot is one of the things. Canker dieback is another. Uh, crown gall, these are different diseases. Crown gall, uh, pecan bunch, uh, root rot, thank you. Uh, and sun scald. Those are all different types of diseases. I mean, the, the pest, this is actually good. The uh, fall, uh, uh, Webworm. Uh, that's a that's a actually a, a creature that 
Yeah, I'm thank you. That's actually this is the far web, and I actually wrote all of this stuff from this book directly. The Hattiesburg Public Library. There's public libraries in every state. Uh, go to your public library, get these books. They have this information in there for whatever you love to do. Um, but in this case, in this book, the fall uh, webworm is actually one that uh, comes out in the fall, and it'll uh, create little, um, it'll create uh, uh, webs. Uh, little cobwebs of uh, balls in in the branches and those cobweb balls, balls will over time kill the tree and the tree is like fighting all of these things trying to fight it on its own and over time uh, as you can see with this tree it loses and then it gets worse and worse and then it starts to develop diseases and then the the pests combined with the combined with the diseases uh, combined with just uh, the natural climate kills the tree over time but this tree can actually be saved um, if you look here at this tree, this one is dying. You look over here. Uh, this is this is the worst from what I've seen. This tree here. Uh, this is the first tree on the left. The second tree on the right. Let's get into that where the first tree is. Um, this is just. I mean, this this branch is going to be hit worse because, as you can see, it's on the lower side of the tree. All the nutrients. The sap of the tree goes up. In the fall, the sap falls down. A good reference here is if you're a video gamer, which is another, uh, which is another um, uh, entrepreneurial pursuit, if you will, that I'm I'm, I'm involved in. Uh, the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, Nintendo 64. If you remember when that Dooku tree, the Great Dooku tree, was dying, it, it changed colors. This tree is doing the same thing. It's dying and it's changing colors and the sap, is, the nutrients is going down into the roots to prepare for the winter so it can survive. This tree is, bet, is in a better shape than that tree over there that we saw to the left, the extreme left. This tree to the right is getting to that stage where the first tree is. The same, the same uh, indications that we saw on the first tree is what we see here, the marks in the bark. Uh, and that's probably a woodpecker chucking away, trying to find a worm that's in the tree it, itself. Um, and that causes some um, problems over time. I'm assuming in this case, and, and I say that in this tree's case because this already has a disease on it. And we get to the final tree here. This is in the best, this tree is in the best shape. This is the one that can be definitely saved that those, those first two trees can't. This one is, I mean, look at the leaves. I, I mean, just look at the leaves, look at the color. Look at the color difference of that tree versus the color in the other two trees. Those leaves are alive. These leaves are dying. So this is, this is natural change in color. This is not natural. This is disease. Uh, and what these, this tree is the best. The one, this first one right here. These two trees here. These can actually grow uh, pecans and bear pecans if they're just taken care of. Uh, if it's just taken care of. You see those, you see those branches, how twisted they are? Look at the branches, how they curve down like fingers. This tree hasn't been trained. If it was trained when it was growing and those branches were clipped, it'll grow up and it'll look, it'll look more uh, tame, which is good. And that's what you want. With well, this tree, all you have to do, and this is just my um, hypothesis, is cut those branches that are dead uh, cover the cuts with sap from the pine tree or with any natural thing you can find and then uh, uh, after you've done that uh, get, get, uh, go to the local university which here is the University of Southern Mississippi and have a sample of that bark or a sample of this tree tested and with that test they can show you um, what the nutrients the tree is lack lacking um, if the tree has a disease uh, if something is wrong with the tree, uh, all of that different, all of those different things, and you can add the nutrients that's lacking that you got from that from that sample. Uh, you can talk to, uh, or uh, rather, you can um, whatever the tree needs, you can get it or you can create it, and then the tree starts bearing, and this is all turned around. Uh, but yeah, this one is has the best chance. And as far as here, so. Um, um, if you don't want to go to the store and buy stuff, buy a uh, fertilizer, I'll show you a quick way. I mean, look, this is a nice branch that pecan tree. You can use that as fertilizer. I 
Now this is a this is a rough example. Everything isn't like this. Now there are risk of spiders, yes. There are are, are risk uh, of uh, snakes, yes. Uh, but I just showed you ways to deter those creatures. And if you actually think like them, or you actually um, just analyze using your common sense, or just your senses, it'll act, it'll help you to know what to do, or to to know what to look for. Uh, if you observe here, I'm looking just from visual uh, uh, looking at it visually I can tell okay I don't see anything moving uh, so it should be fine and I know that it's cold so snakes are cold-blooded they want to stay warm so I'm assuming that no snakes are here because this is a cold uh, this is a cold climate and the season is cold now for spiders the same deal however sometimes spiders in the morning they like